Hi, and welcome to what we are looking forward to, to be a very stimulating conversation between two jewels at CELSA. I'm Marie Duzma, an international advisor here at the school and a journalist working in print, radio, and television. And with me, I have Emmanuel Lalemont, an ethnographer and an author and an assistant professor here at CELSA and also Brian J. Bow, a graduate fellow this year at the school and a doctorate student at Michigan State University. Thank you both for being here and I'm um, looking you, forward to, to hearing your ideas and hearing what you're working on. Um, for starters, if I could just ask you to both introduce yourself and talk about what you do here and what your projects are that you're working on. Great. Um, well, I uh, have been here at, uh, at CELSA uh, since August, but my, my background is um, uh, I, I'm a journalist and author. Um, I've done a lot of work in popular music. Um, but these days I'm focusing more on my research, which is in the area of media framing. Um, and we'll talk about that, I imagine, a little bit more in a minute. But I, I focus very much on the way Muslims are portrayed in the news media, primarily in the US, but I'm starting to look also a little bit more um, at that subject in the French context as well. What was it that got you interested in that specifically with framing? I'm really, I've, I've always been fascinated in Muslim culture. Um, I think the, uh, since the time I was a child, I've always found it fascinating that on the one hand there are a lot of uh, Muslim cultural expressions that I think are very beautiful, um, but yet people talk about Muslims in a way that's very um, scary, and people I think are very scared, um, and 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 so and this is this has become more pronounced in the years I think since 9/11, and so I think it's it's an interesting topic, but it, but it's also an important topic for society, I guess. Thanks, Brian. Emmanuel? Yeah, thank you. So I'm an assistant professor in CELSA, and I was hired in 2000, so it's a long time ago. <laughs> Just not since August, but a long time ago. So I'm an ethnographer, and I'm, um, I'm currently working uh, on different topics. Some keywords, uh, several keywords. The city, Paris, of course, but the, the, the urban phenomena all over the world, but quite a lot Paris. Mm -hmm. And um, in Paris, I, I am interested in several uh, topics. One of them is the, the market exchange, the shops in Paris, and the link between shops, market exchange, and the fabrication of the city. The relationships between different persons, different people, into the shops, into the commercial areas in Paris. Another keyword is um, ethnicity. I'm very interested in the fabrication of ethnicity in our world, in our contemporary world. What kind of difference are we uh, made when we talk about ethnicity? So I think it's a, it's a great link between uh, our, our uh, respective wor uh, works. Uh, another keyword is um, event event, a ritual festive event in Paris. I think there is a new topic, it's like we are um, doing a city, we are making a city with some uh, events. And uh, the last one, I'm sorry, <laughs> it's about the attractiveness of Paris for, for foreignness. I, uh, I carry out a, a field work with some two colleagues, ethnographer colleagues, uh, about foreigners who buy um, apartment in Paris, pied à terre uh, in Paris, and why they love so much Paris to want to be one, one day a Parisian, like a Parisian. So that's it. And that's very hard to, to sum up. I mean, you took a whole book exploring this idea, but if you could talk a little bit about that in a nutshell, what is it that people love about Paris? <laughs> I think Paris, it's a very attractive city because it's a very historical city. I think this history is very important. We said in France it's a patrimoine, patrimonial city. And it's very attractive. There is, I think, uh, 12 million tourists per year in Paris. It's a very 
big city, a very big uh, touristic city. But some people doesn't, don't want to be only a tourist. They want to live in Paris, even if it's just for one month per year. And they want to, to have an experience of the Parisian lifestyle. And I think it's, uh, uh, it's very interesting because they are not tourists. They are not Parisian, real Parisian. They are um, between them. So it's a very new figure of, this, of the, what is to be a, a, cit a citizen? A, um, citizen. A citizen now, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Because you travel a lot. It's very significant of globalization, the phenomenon of globalization. So they travel, they want to be in Paris one month, two months per year, and they are perform a Parisian style. So it's very interesting for an ethnographer to see what kind of performance is to be a citizen, this kind of city that is Paris. And I think it's a phenomenon, we can observe it in uh, several cities. Uh, all over the world, in New York, in Los Angeles, San Francisco, in London, in Berlin. And the same question I asked Brian, what, what is it that attracts you to these subjects? How do you find your, your topics? And the book of yours that I'm enjoying very much right now is the one about Barbès. Mm. Um, how, how do you connect to your subjects and find them? And how do you become a part of the story that you're telling? That's something I'd love to talk with about, about with both of you. Mm. How do you connect with I think your if, subjects? If I uh, carry out field work in Paris, it's because I love this city. Yeah. And um, Barbès, it's a good example to examine what kind of neighborhoods are. It, it's, a, it's in link with you said. It's a neighborhood very uh, particular in Paris because it's very famous. Everyone knows about Barbès, even tourists. Even people who never go to Barbès, they know the, the name Barbès because it's very crowded. It's a strip of shops, very uh, specific, it's discount shops. Uh, you can buy a suitcase very, uh, at, low, at a very low price. You can buy clothes, discount uh, clothes, but you can buy also um, ethnic goods. You can buy also, I don't know, very uh, several things. You can buy everything mm -hmm. in Barbès. So a lot of people, even if they don't live in Barbès, come to Barbès to have this experience to buy at low price a, very, um, a variety of things. And it's a very famous neighborhood, but it's a very scary neighborhood for, for mm -hmm. a lot of people in Paris because it's, there is a lot of uh, people, uh, immigrant people, who are selling or buying, who are just present in the public space in Barbès. So it's very crowded and it's a very cosmopolitan crowd. So some people uh, are very scared about this kind of public space. So it's quite, like, there is a lot of people from Algeria, from Morocco, from Tunisia, and from Africa. So it's a kind of very cosmopolitan neighborhoods. And in Paris, the cosmopolitan neighborhoods are attractive, but also, hmm. for some people, very uh, scary neighborhoods. So it's, it's like you're uh, about Muslim uh, representation. Sure. And, uh, sure. And, and I think for me, <clears throat> as I've worked both on my, uh, on my academic research, but also my, my, my journalism work, the, the, this, it all works in, in somewhat the same way in that um, uh, there are a lot of fascinating stories that can be told. And sometimes we tell them with interviews and sometimes we tell them with data that we collect. Um, and. But, but there's always a question. There's always some kind of burning question. Um, and for me, all of the stuff I'm interested in, um, both journalistically and academically, can be boiled down to the question of culture and how people create culture and what they do with culture and what it does for us. Um, you asked how I connect with my subjects. Really, um, that speaks more to my journalism work. Um, and uh, I know from my research and 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 just from logic that when I'm working as a journalist, I'm making choices. I'm, I am changing the story. I'm, I'm, it's an intervention. That said, I try really hard to keep my, myself out of the story and certainly out of the interviewing process. And, and I've just found that people, people like to tell their stories. 
Um, and people want a space. Um, and, and I try to give people that space. And what I find is that very often um, it, it can become a very intimate thing. And people will start telling me things. Um, as long as I give them that space, mm -hmm. people will start telling me stuff that's really interesting. And then, and then you follow up and you, 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 you ask some, some sort of probing questions. But, but I think the initial part of, of that connection is just giving somebody a space to tell their story. Emmanuel, what about you, your approach with um, the books that you've written? You, you clearly spend a lot of time with the people you write about and a lot of time in these places, in these neighborhoods, in these shops, in these homes. And how do you see your role? What kind of distance do you try mm. to maintain or even erase? Mm. I think the, the ethnography method, it's very um, near from the journalistic method. You made interviews, you were with the people, you, you, you give the um, people space to, to express the, themselves. Perhaps there's a difference in the time that we are with the people because, uh, for example, when I, when I was investigated about this neighborhood, Barbes, the most important thing is that I have to stay a long time in the streets, in the public space, in the shops, in the stores, and people have to see me and I have to explain what, what kind of job I am doing, why I'm here. And uh, my presence, the fact that I am here, is very important to interact mm -hmm. with the people. And they ask me, are you a journalist? I say, no, I'm quite a journalist, but not, not, not a journalist. I can't explain. I am an ethnographer. I can say, oh, we are not Indian people. Mm -hmm. We are not in the jungle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So I have to explain my presence, and it's very important. But let me tell you a story about that. I, I understand one time they said to me, but you, where come you from? And I said, oh, there is a key to enter in this world. And I said, oh, you know, my grandmother was Spanish. So they said, oh, she is like us. So we can speak with her. She's like us. One day she come from elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So it's what like um, a key, a magic key to enter to interact with people, and now it was okay. I say, okay, I'm like you. We can interact, we can have an exchange, and we can talk together. And it was very, for me, very uh, interesting because it's uh, precisely the method in ethnography. You have to to try to talk um, with the point of view of the people. You have to be inside this point of view. Try to be inside this point of view. And, if you are inside this point of view, you can try to understand the logic of communication between the people. Thank you both so much. Do you have any more things that you would like to add, last little nuggets or questions you have for each other? No, no I, think I think so. It's, uh, okay. it's great. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you so much, and best of luck with all of your work. Mm -hmm. I look forward to reading it. Thank Thanks. you.